film me going through this water crossing. Test, test. Welcome to my new studio. Check it out. It's built. What do you think about the the background here? Hold, hold, hold that thought real quick. Oh, all right. That's better. Now I'm in my multi-million dollar studio out in the desert. Got this epic view with sunset behind me. Sunlight is glowing nicely. So what I decided to build is a video wall. This way I can put anything I want in the background. And this for me is like the best option because now I can change up what I have in the background. Still keeps it fairly simple, but I don't really have to worry about the space. I don't have to worry about adding a bunch of things. Like one big video wall that's by windows and then a few things here on the desk, super simple. So let's roll back a few days ago. Let's go through the whole process of how I built out the studio and what it took to, to make this. Welcome to my new studio. Well, this is gonna be my new studio. So I just moved into a new house. And if you saw my previous video where I broke down my entire studio, well, in that video, I had basically had to leave my house. So there's some things going on behind the scenes. And I appreciate all of you who have reached out. And no, I did not get a divorce. But the reality is there is some stuff going on behind the scenes, forced us to move, but it is what it is. And now I'm in a new place. So this is the studio. I moved in, I set stuff up as quick as possible, but I'm trying to figure out how to make this a good space to film in, to make my videos, because it's a little bit different. My old space was a 14 by nine room, so it was a little bit longer and it allowed me to have some more wall space. Whereas this studio office, which is just another spare bedroom, is more of a square. And the problem is I've got a giant window here, another giant window over here, two big mirrors, and then the door in the corner. So really, I only have one blank wall. This one's kind of blank too, but it limits me on what I could do in this space. And so I'm trying to figure out a good setup. I've done a few different trial runs of ways I could set up this room. The first one here, I did my original setup with my desk that I had in my previous studio. So the problem with the first setup that I tried in the space is that well, the camera's over here by my door, which is fine if I was to like set this up each time. When I set this up, I have my light somewhere here. I have my table here. I sit right here. And it was a pretty cool shot. Like it had the windows in the background and all of that. But now I have to set this up each time. And for me, setting stuff up each time is kind of a problem. I don't want to have to set up my lighting, my table, my camera, put everything up in the space to be able to hit record. In my previous studio, I had everything set where I literally walked over to the camera, flipped on power, sat down at my desk and started recording. It just makes the whole process of creating videos so much easier when you can have a setup like that. So I want to have something that's a little bit more permanent in the space and not something that I'm constantly moving in and out. And so my initial thought was to have my computer on this wall. Early yesterday at like 5 a.m., I got up and I was like, what if I moved my computer over here? And I don't particularly like having the window right behind my monitors. However, I do want to control the light. With what the setups I've been playing around with in this space, the natural light's great, but natural light fluctuates. So like right now, it might look really good with the way it is, but if the sun changes position, time of year, it's going to get brighter, it's going to get darker. I might have more light coming in from this way over here. Natural lights become more of an issue. It's a great way to just get started, start building your studio, is just use the natural windows, natural light. But eventually, if you want to have full control, well, you need to have full control of your light. So I'm putting my desk here, and my plan is to black out this window. I might get blackout blinds, or I might just put a piece of duvetine up. Duvetine is like this material that's really thick. It blocks out all the light. I use it on my client jobs all the time. So I might just put a sheet of that up there, another sheet over here, and that blacks out the space completely. But I've moved my desk here because I have a plan. Let's set up the camera. All right, so this is 
kind of roughed in. Here's my FX6 with my 35 millimeter kind of sitting next to my desk. Now you can see what kind of shot I could get here. So I have my million award up there, something that I want to keep in the background. But now I have this blank wall behind me. So with the way that I've set up this camera over here, you get a little bit of filmmaking with the desk here and I could put like a Final Cut Pro timeline on or something I'm working on. So you get a little sense of that. I'm gonna black out that window. So I'll have to control the lighting in some way, probably light from over here. And then I have this now blank wall. And so I'm using this wall that has the window over there, but I have like just enough space to have a complete blank slate. So let's set this up and then we'll work on that background. So with this desk setup, I've just set it in the middle of the room. I have my computer all set up in my rack case over here using the exact same setup that I used in my previous studio. Basically, I just took everything from that studio, moved it into here. So if you wanna see every piece of gear that I use, I'll make sure to include the link to that previous video, the one I did a couple weeks ago, where I broke down my entire office. So you can see all the gear that I use. Same rolly case, the same setup for my laptop. It's all the same. It's just in a new space. But I think for saving space in here, I have my camera pushed up against the wall here. I think what I need to do is bring back my gear tree, which is a pretty cool tool. You could put everything on a single pole. I'm gonna put the gear tree in the corner over here, and then I can hang my light and push it over where it's in the proper space, but I'm not taking up a lot of space on the ground. I can keep my computer here in this corner. So this gear tree is really cool. So you can fit it in most rooms and basically you expand it so that it touches and then you like screw the bottom of it and that makes it super tight. You can kind of hang whatever you want on it. So I'm gonna put a light and then I'm probably gonna do my audio because when I'm sitting in this chair here, it seems like it wouldn't be too far of a reach to get over here with the audio. That way, the only thing that I have on the ground is gonna be my camera, which is gonna go right here. All right, so let's do a little test here. I have the microphone. I can swing this wherever I want to. Right above me, I have my light here, which is controlled through the Citus app, which is Aperture's app. So I'll be able to dial that in, be able to just control it here. I think first, what I want to do is dial in the lighting. I wonder if I could pull my blackout blinds from my previous studio. was a lot easier to take down than I anticipated. But um, now it's time to take a little break because I'm gonna go see Dune 2. Dune was pretty awesome, but I'm now in day two of building the studio and uh, it's dark outside. So I can see what this is like when I'm gonna cut out all the light from these windows. So I've added my key light here. I have my microphone right overhead, so we're gonna see how this sounds. And I've actually added a secondary light up here. This is actually another 60 watt light from Jayun, and it's like this little tiny box light. They're kind of these cool little lights that you could use in weird places because they're so small. But I have a little reflector on it, and I've changed the color temperature so that it's more warm. And you could see that this light here is balanced properly. I'm shooting at 5600 Kelvin. So I'm using my key light at 5600. However, I've dropped this one down to tungsten, like 3200. And so you're getting this kind of orange glow and it almost feels like the sun or just another source. It just gives a little bit of color, a little bit of texture. And I have it right out of frame. So you get that glow up here. Kind of has a cool look to it. So I'm playing around with just how I can change the lighting in the space. The big thing that I need to figure out is this background. I could just leave it white like this but I want to do something just a little bit more. And I've had this idea to include video walls in my sets in the past. I've just never 
been able to do it. So I need to measure out the space, put some video screens up, and then what I could do is put whatever I want on the screens back there, and it feels like windows in the background, and I could have my set expand beyond just the space here in my studio. And because I'm using TVs to create a video wall, well, I can adjust them so it looks natural and so that the light is always perfect in this space. Uh, it just allows me to have a more dynamic set where it feels like the scene just kind of extends forever and it's not in this little box. So I need some TVs, I need some stands, and then we could start playing around with what's in the background. Maybe I'll put some sand dunes. So Target had a deal on some 55 inch TVs. So I bought three of them that I'm planning to mount vertically because it fits the perfect window with my 35 millimeter if I mount three TVs side by side. Now I also ordered some cheap TV stands off Amazon and within a day, I had everything ready to start building this. Now, the other problem that I have to figure out is how I'm gonna project the image across all three screens. So I also bought a cheap splitter off of Amazon, which allows you to split an HDMI signal over multiple TVs. Now there's cheap versions of this around $100, and then there's more expensive ones up in the $500 to $1,000 range. And ideally, I'm trying to make this as cheap as possible. So first problem, this thing doesn't really work. Can you do like a three by one or four by one, whatever, up to four outputs. But for some reason, this isn't working. Maybe it's the TV, maybe it's the connection, maybe it's just, this is a garbage. So I'm gonna buy another adapter. For now, I'm just gonna get this first TV up in the right position, test it with just a single input, make sure that's all working before I go down the path of building all the other TVs and setting this all up. All right, so this is what it looks like with one screen. You can see it's back there, it's out of focus. The image quality on that's pretty awful right now with how stretched out that image is I just grabbed, but looks like it'll work pretty well. I need to get that splitter and then I'll put up the other two TVs and I could just stretch it an image across all three. And then I need to put my YouTube award back up there, better positioning. And then when I have it blacked out in this room, change the exposure of the background, I'll be able to control this a little bit more. And then maybe I'll put stuff like that plant over there in the shot, some other things that create more depth so it, uh, you could, it gives that illusion that you're looking through a window. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. So what I need to do is get the other two TVs up, that splitter, and then I'm gonna add some duvetine on the bottom just to black it out so that it's clean. bad for not tweaking any of the lighting yet. I mean, I have one more, <laughs> I have one more panel to put up and it looks pretty legit, especially with this bright light coming through. Got to tweak what I'm seeing is I'm seeing some reflections on the TV. Got to tweak some of those, but I think pretty cool. So after the garbage splitter, I tried just adding each TV as an external monitor to my laptop and then arranging them side by side. And once they're all arranged, I can just pull an image across all three monitors. It's still somewhat clunky to use, but it could work. However, there still is one problem. We need to get some footage for the background. Someone get film me going through this water crossing. All right, so I got all four monitors set up. I did actually splurge and I got the more high-end connector for all four monitors because using the computer was just such a pain. It connects four, makes it one screen. It was like 500 bucks. It's great. You plug in an HDMI, instantly you have a monitor and it rotates them all perfectly and all that. So, you know, good upgrade. But you might be wondering, where am I? So I am uh, in Utah kind of uh, in the middle of nowhere at the moment. I just slept down in that canyon right over there. But I came out here because the last thing I need to do is get some backgrounds for these three monitors. And so what I want is some pretty like landscapes, some kind of like unreal places that you would have like a house because it looks like windows. And so my plan is come out to some cool spots in Utah like this here 
shoot some different plates. And a plate is basically what you put in the background. It's called a plate. And I'm gonna shoot a few different versions that I could put in the background, some in the daytime, some at sunset. And the goal being that I want to have this kind of feeling that you're in these epic locations and it's, you know, like this behind. It just creates that illusion that I'm like right outside in these cool landscapes. So we're coming down this trail and there's this really cool spot that we want to go film. I think it might be, work well for what we're trying to do here, but uh, there's a giant hill in the way. Like not just any hill, it's like complete sand all the way to the top, probably about 300 feet tall. Justin, what do you, how do you feel about this? I feel like uh, I'm, I'm already a terrible sand driver. If you ever see me on a beach, I uh, don't make it very far. And this is like a beach with hill. I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing. Very low confidence level. Like. Okay, so we just got to the top of this hill. That was uh, that was quite an adventure. It took me three tries to get up it, but uh, made it happen. The reason we came up here, though, is look at this view. This is unbelievable. So I'm going to set up the camera here on a tripod to try and get one of these plates for the background. I want to do something with the canyons. The sun's off to the side. Now, in terms of how I'm shooting it, A93. I have a Lonzi Video Go tripod. I should probably do a video about this. I love this tripod. I use it all the time. And I'm just shooting on my 16 to 35 F4. I've stopped down. I'm at like an F16 here with this view because I just want everything in focus. I want it all razor sharp. But the key is with this kind of a shot, I just need to let the camera run for a while. So I'm just going to let it sit here. That way, if you do see movement in the background, it's consistent and it's not choppy. So I'm just going to let this run. And eventually what I'll do is make just a cut that's probably like a 30 minute take to go in the background. Cause when I sit at my office, a lot of times I'll just hit roll and let it go. And ideally I don't want to see anything back there like fades or cuts or anything because it's supposed to look like windows. So I'm just going to let this roll for a long period of time. And uh, yeah, just have some footage to play with this. Over the next couple days, I continued to explore Southern Utah and Northern Arizona with my buddies and we found some really cool, unique locations. Each spot that we stopped, I tried to grab at least one plate so that I could have a few to play around with when I get back to my office. And I'm back in the studio. So now that I have all the plates, I have everything ready to finish off all of this. Let's figure out how much time it actually takes to set up because the, one of the big aspects of doing this whole thing was to make it easy to set up every time I want to record. So let's start a timer. Let's see how long this takes.
So not bad, a few minutes to get everything turned on and set up, but not that big a deal. It'll definitely get smoother as I do this more and more, and I know exactly which backgrounds that I wanna use. So let's take a look. Here is the first background. This is that epic view when I was up on top of the hill. It's definitely a brighter look. It's more in daytime. And depending on what I wanna do, maybe I'll have it brighter in this room and, and it looks like it matches the outside a little bit better. So here is another background. It's from that same vantage point, just pointed in a different direction. So just to kind of see the difference, it's switching it up with a few different looks. All right, so now we have more of a sunset feel. I brought down the ambience in the room so it's a little bit darker and that source light up there is giving more of that directionality of the sunset in the background. So interesting, some different looks to play with with this background and definitely the more trips I go on, the more places I go, I'm just gonna always capture different plates, different times of day and I could change up this background and play around with it. But overall, super happy with the way this turned out. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments about what you think about building this video wall. And if you're someone who's working on building out your own studio, well, make sure you check out this video right here. I go through some different ideas on how to make any space work. You don't need to build a video wall like this. All right, I'll see you on the next one.